fire alarm doesn't go off during this video, I'm gonna be so surprised. <laughs> oh, I knew it! <laughs> I knew that was coming! What's up guys? Happy Monday. Welcome to today's episode of Meal Prep Monday. Um, today I was kind of thinking about what are some of the reasons why people don't enjoy meal prep or rather don't enjoy eating their meal prepped food. And I think one of the things that I hear more than anything is that the food that you reheat or your leftovers or whatever doesn't taste as good as it did when you first made it. Obviously, of course, fresh food is always going to taste better than reheated food. But there are some exceptions to that and there's some ways that you can help that. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. And these are going to be some of my personal tips that I use like for my own foods that I reheat and just like how to keep your food tasting fresh, making sure you don't overcook it, how to make your meal prep be actually desirable. So the first thing that we're gonna prep today are chicken thighs. People always ask me why I use chicken thighs over like chicken breasts and stuff like that. Obviously because chicken thighs have a blend of dark meat and light meat they're gonna be more juicy and it's going to just hold its texture and its flavor a lot better in my opinion than chicken breast does I'm just not a big fan of chicken breast even like when I would prep leaner chickens before oh. I would use tenderloins and chop them up into like super bite-sized pieces so that like you weren't just taking a huge bite of like dry chicken breast and I think that like turns a lot of people off so the first thing is to pick a good quality meat of course like for me personally I like to get my meats from Whole Foods sometimes Trader Joe's but I do find that those higher quality meats tend to last a little bit longer and just like have a better flavor and taste when you're reheating it or using it throughout the week. So first thing first is going to be meat quality and for today's meal prep Monday, I'm gonna show you guys how to prep the most bomb chicken thighs ever. like potatoes that you make in the air fryer, which I'll show you is really easy. They do get a little bit of a crust on them and I think that that reheats much better than doing something like mashed potatoes or just regular old baked sweet potatoes, which I do sometimes. And I baked my sweet potato fries in one of my previous Meal Prep Monday videos. A lot of comments were like, how do these reheat? Do they get soggy, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like somebody who is new to meal prepping or new to eating healthy, that can definitely be like something that you don't wanna deal with because it's not gonna make your food appetizing. Whereas like people who've been eating this way for so long like I would literally eat chicken thighs and sweet potatoes cold and soggy just because I like them but if you're more on the picky side and you definitely don't want to deal with the sogginess I think getting a smaller and more firm skinned potato like purple potatoes or red potatoes um, and keeping the skin on leaving them in the air fryer is gonna just create a little bit more texture so that when you do reheat it it's not gonna get as soggy so the only thing I'm gonna do with these little guys is cut them into fourths I'm gonna spray them with a bit of coconut spray and then we're gonna talk about seasoning people use salt and pepper I don't I'm not really huge on pepper but I always put sea salt on pretty much everything if you're not sure which route you want to go with the spices you can't really go wrong with doing salt and pepper now I will say there are a couple different things that I like to mix together and some of them are from Trader Joe's some of them just kind of are random spices that I found but for potatoes I always go with salt the coconut spray but then I like to always put paprika on potatoes Again, no real reason, just a personal preference thing. I really like paprika. And then I've also been mixing this Trader Joe's Umami seasoning as well as this 21 seasoning salute. With things like potatoes, vegetables, it's really important to have a good flavoring that you have going on together. Flavors that work well together. And in this case, the Umami seasoning like pairs really nicely with the 21 seasoning salute. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the potatoes, season them up with these bad boys, and then we're just gonna let them sit in the air fryer while we prep everything else. So this 
same kind of thing applies for vegetables. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this pan down. Now the chicken is already in there, so as soon as that's done, I'm going to go ahead and roast these garbanzo beans. Because I've already seasoned the potatoes with this umami seasoning and the 21 seasoning salute and paprika, I'm just gonna stick with that same flavor profile since I'm gonna probably have those together. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of paprika and a little bit of this. And if you're curious what's in this 21 seasoning salute is onion, black pepper, celery seed, cayenne pepper, parsley, basil, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of just like a mix of 21 seasonings. I'm gonna put those in the bottom rack. You guys are gonna ask me about like the time that the chicken thighs are in the oven so they're cooking on the inside so my opinion cooking's a skill and something that needs to be practiced over and over again so that you can get better at it and there was definitely a time where I did not know how long to leave the chicken in the oven for and I wasn't sure if it was cooked all the way through but the more that you do it the more you practice it and you see like there's a little rule of thumb where like if you poke the chicken and it's like too squishy it's not done yet it should feel like the palm of your hand you know there's like little tips and tricks you can find on the internet and stuff I don't really leave the chicken in for a specific amount of time I put it in I peek on it and I kind of have a good idea plus those were like smaller sizes so I'm sure that they're not going to take as long. I chose to season the chicken thighs with barbecue seasoning and let them char because again, I feel like this is a way that keeps your food really, really fresh tasting even when you are reheating it. Not fresh like it hasn't been in your fridge for a couple days, but fresh I mean in the sense like as if you were to have just cooked it, you know, like it gives you that fresh grill char taste, which I personally like. So I can tell that these are pretty much perfect. I don't know if you'll be able to see that by the way I'm pushing on it, but I can tell those are perfect and they're just gonna sit. So it's important to also let your meat rest after you cook it so that it keeps the juiciness inside as much as possible. Once I took the chickpeas out of the oven, I actually changed the oven from bake to broil and put it on high. And this is how I make my burnt broccoli. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I absolutely love burnt broccoli. And I think again, this is one of those things that makes it more palatable once it's been reheated because broccoli is one of those things that definitely can get soggy just like cauliflower and all that other stuff first I just have this little steam bag I know that I could just get my own broccoli and chop it up but to be honest with you guys I really hate chopping it up because it's such a mess and the little pieces get everywhere so this is a very clean and easy way to steam your broccoli now obviously if you were just gonna meal prep this you could steam it in the microwave and then just leave it at that but we're gonna do that first for about three minutes to cook them through just a little bit. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave and then we are going to put them on the pan and we're gonna put a little bit of different seasonings on them and I'll tell you guys what those are and then we're gonna put it on broil. These are fresh out of the microwave. We're just gonna put them on the little pan here. I'm just gonna actually spray them with a little bit of butter spray first. Um, I've put coconut oil spray on the actual tray, but this just gives it an extra little buttery flavor. Then of course, like I said, we're gonna do a little bit of sea salt. And the seasoning I got at Whole Foods, it's called pizza, and obviously it does have that pizza topping taste to it, but it's actually really good on vegetables. And what's in it is onions, bell peppers, fennel seeds, oregano, garlic, basil, chili powder, parsley, thyme, marjorami, and celery. So it's a nice little blend of everything. You wanna flip them up so that the tops of the broccoli is what's facing your broiler. And then we're just gonna pop that in the oven and keep an eye on it. Again, no specific time, everyone's oven is different, but I just have it on high broil. I'm gonna throw that in there until the tops get nice and burnt. Typically in Meal Prep Monday videos, I always prep two different proteins. And the only reason why I'm not prepping this beef that I just purchased is because I have been using the servings raw and making them in this really cool thing that my mom got me for Christmas. I wanna show you. When I first opened this, I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. Like This is one of those like QVC gimmick things, but this is actually a um, Iron Chef copper microwave grill. I believe that's what it's called. I know that sounds insane, 
but trust me on this, I'm gonna post a picture of this burger that I made in this thing, okay? I usually, like, because I don't have a grill here, if I wanted to make a burger, I would just put it on the cast iron skillet, which is also a great way to do it as well, but um, my mom got me this, and I was like, okay, I'll try it. And it seriously makes your meat, you put it in there raw. Like, you heat this up in the microwave first for three minutes, then you put your serving of meat in, and you put it in the microwave, and it cooks it, gets the grill lines on it and everything. It was so good. So I've been using the meats, you know, like taking out the servings as I need it, so I haven't been prepping this. Uh, but in case you're curious, this is the Maverick Extra Lean Ground Beef. This is what I usually use if I'm not using the Whole Foods Australian Organic 95.5, but they were out of that at Whole Foods, which is why I ended up getting this. With meat seasonings, I'm gonna show you guys two of my favorites. If you're going for more of like a Mexican beef dish, you can always, of course, just use like taco seasoning, but I like to use different fajita seasonings. I just feel like this is really good if you're doing like a beef and rice bowl or beef burritos or something like that. But then for my little burgers that I've been using, I have been doing this McCormick Grill Masters Worcestershire Pub Burger. I like this one and the hamburger, but I'm out of just the original hamburger, so I've been using this. It just gives it that like very bar food restaurant type feel to it. So I really think that it's an important thing to make sure you're seasoning your meats as best as you can. It will definitely bring out the flavors of it. So um, that's the only reason why I'm not prepping this beef, but I did want to let you guys know what seasonings I'm using on that as well. Another thing that is also really, in my opinion, highly underrated is mixing sweet and savory. It's one of my favorite things to do, whether I'm meal prepping or not. And these two little jams here, this one is sugar plum jam from Trader Joe's. It's just a regular old marmalade from plums and then this is guava jelly or as people were probably gonna make fun of me for saying it guava jelly I have been putting this on breakfast sandwiches or burgers like on the top layer of bread and it just kind of elevates that meal to give it that extra little kick I like all the different types of textures and flavors and sweet and salty and spicy I'm all about it so I just feel like it's really important because it's a great way for you to actually end up liking the food that you're eating and if you are liking what you're eating you are definitely more likely to stick with that as you can see, I like to have a lot of my foods crispy, burnt, spicy, seasoned to the tea. I mean, I don't know, I just that's the way I personally like to enjoy my reheated foods, especially during the week. I just feel like it makes it taste so much better. So if you're just getting started into meal prep, highly suggest you go out and get yourself some spices. I just recently ordered those primal, or what are they called, primal palette spices. I think I showed you guys them in my vlog from Iowa. But um, any spices will do, honestly. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just wanted to try something new. I just like to do it this way. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you try any of these recipes. And as always, my recipe ebooks are in the description box. I have a ton of different ones in there, so go check them out if you haven't. They're only $5, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Meal Pet Monday.